Uh, I'm going to introduce to you our new framework for participation that um, uh, hopefully will allow us to do some of the next step uh, pieces of development as Ruffin was describing. So um, it's own, use, and serve uh, your co-op. And there's an essay in the workbook on page 11 that kind of lays it out if you want to follow along in the print version. But um, about a year ago, the uh, ICA uh, introduced the blueprint for a cooperative decade and identified uh, some big goals and the five themes that uh, Dame Pauline talked about this morning. So if you haven't checked this document out, it's in our Seabuild library. It's really uh, uh, pretty inspirational to see how the, the global stewards of the cooperative movement are framing up the issues that really translate quite nicely down to the work that we're doing in our local food co-ops. So the three goals are, let's be the acknowledged leader in some important areas, let's be the preferred model, and let's be the fastest growing, right? And then they kind of unpack those goals. But what inspires me about this is that it says that we have goals, we have aspirations, and that people can see them and understand them. That's why they would be uh, acknowledged, at, we would be acknowledged as a leader, and why the co-op would be the preferred model, right? That actually we're telling the story, as Ruffin was suggesting, and people actually can get it. And then uh, the, the uh, fastest growing form of enterprise, when you hear the ICA people talk about that, what they're really getting at is impact. So they're projecting a decade down the road and looking back and, and really wanting to be able to show that co-ops really made the biggest impact of all the different kinds of enterprise in the world, right? So I think if you th consider the work that we're doing at the local level, I mean, for me, I can see how that really translates right down to the the daily work that, that we're doing. And to see them talking about it as a worldwide movement is, uh, is pretty powerful. So as Pauline, uh, Dame Pauline described, uh, participation, sustainability, identity, capital, and legal framework. And again, we saw that a year ago and went, huh, our work with the food co-op community for the last 30 years, uh, we know a lot about this participation thing. We take it seriously already. And yet, as Ruffin was describing, we still have a ways to go in how we operationalize that and really use it as a driving force for the success of our, of our co-ops. The ICA talks about it in terms of elevating participation and the value of membership and governance. So um, as a group that really focuses on how do we help individual co-ops be stronger and successful, our heads were going, well, not all participation is the same. And wouldn't it be great if we could develop a practical guide to participation that would be a very useful tool for each co-op that, that we're working with so that we can really together uh, increase uh, our, our capacity and our abilities. So I'm just going to walk through the own, use, and serve ideas real quickly. And, uh, and again, just keep in your mind maybe uh, what might be an example that you can already see in your co-op that maps to one of these ideas. Okay, that would just be a way to start already getting the wheels turning uh, using the framework. So owning the co-op, right, this really ties into the uh, democratic member control, economic participation, co-op identity, uh, education, all of those fundamentals that we understand really, really well. And I think it shows kind of most easily in the startup of a co-op, right? That a group of people get together, they figure out, well, how should we be organized? They decide that the co-op is a preferred model. So there's like, okay, there's an example of it. Um, they, they work on how, what's representation going to look like? How does democracy flow through the, the cooperative? Uh, what's our capital need? How do owners create a capital stake? in the organization, what's our purpose, what's driving us, why are we trying to do this, what's the difference we're trying to make. And all those are great things that happen at the very beginning and from time to time are revisited, right? T 
time to time. So this is not like a daily thing, right? We're not frenetically reinventing the organization. But every now and then, we say, huh, are we on the right track? Is the purpose of the organization still resonate? Right, you can picture that. So we call this kind of a low, it's like incredibly important. It's a differentiator. It shows how we're not the, uh, the, the standard corporate model. Uh, but in fact, a lot of the owner level participation things happen at a relatively low frequency. Still, as member owners, we, we want to know that we're being kept up to date, that we have good information. Uh, so as co-op leaders, we're hopefully um, sharing information about societal trends and the changes in the competitive marketplace and the, um, uh, to connect to, to some of the ideas this morning. Uh, are we going to uh, stagnate, die, or grow? Uh, are we going to deal with our capacity issues? You know, there are some uh, fundamental owner things that are really important, and yet it's a from time to time kind of thing. Some of the things that a co-op might even do that uh, influence the owner level participation happens at such a low frequency that uh, the people in the leadership positions might not even remember them. Or to say it differently, you might have to work really hard to institutionalize uh, in a way that people, you can keep the story fresh. And certainly you wouldn't expect your owners to remember things that happened 20 years ago uh, that were pr somehow profoundly affected the organization, right? So there's a burden here um, on, on uh, the, the owner, the, the co-op leaders to really perpetuate strong owner um, participation. So um, using the co-op, this gets at some of the stuff that Ruffin was talking about. And here's kind of my, my most simplistic description would be, are we able to create a map that shows the goals of the co-op like here's what we're trying to do together. Here's the impact that we're trying to create. And it maps down to individual choices that we're making every day. Right? So am I going to buy this or that? Am I going to go to the co-op or someplace else? Am I going to improve the recipe or not improve the recipe? I mean, there are just all these choices that we make when we're engaging in the goods and services and the structures and system that the co-op creates that actually drive the co-op forward in accomplishing its goals. I mean, using the co-op is really how we create the forward movement and the success. So like Ruffin was getting at, can we actually provide a feedback loop for people that show how we're doing as we make our choices? To me, what this means is that we have to really understand what our goals are and really show clearly for people how it works to, uh, to actually help move the, the co-op forward in those goals. Everybody can play as a user, right? It's not just owners. Owners, staff, vendors, lenders, neighbors. Um, there are many people involved in actually helping move the co-op forward in its goals. And maybe part of the way that we create a, a culture of uh, participation, as Dame, uh, Dame Pauline was describing, is that we kind of celebrate that participation, even if it just seems like a thing that was going to happen anyway. You know, one of my favorite examples is at Weaver Street Market. Um, their goal is to really ramp up the local and regionally f produced food. And they want their food to be uh, healthy, tasty, and fun. So to me, if a person in the deli improves the recipe of the salad, and people buy more of it, that that innovation that happened on the recipe is an incredibly valuable form of participation in helping the co-op move forward on its goals. So how can we actually create a culture where we're, we're showing where we're trying to go and how everybody is making a contribution, right? So that's the use part. And then lastly is this idea of serving the co-op. And there's uh, kind of a couple layers to this. One is, that as you're participating as an owner and a user, you're serving the co-op. You're, you're in it for a common good. There's something about it that's apart from your own self-interest that is happening, right? And um, so serving the co-op just by showing up as an owner and participating or by using the co-op's goods and services or participating at that level. 
Uh, and then also, the co-op itself has needs. Um, you all are great examples of people stepping up to be in the leadership role, providing service to the community that way. And you know, I'm sure you can see, the many ways that individuals serve the co-op itself. And you know, in this picture, we have uh, some I love my co-op pictures, right? And what that's highlighting is just the idea that everyone can play the serve the co-op game if they understand the story. Because just telling the story about the co-op is actually serving the co-op, right? So how can we create a story where the co-op is the hero and the hero is actually us and that we can permeate that out into the community in a manner where uh, contributing and participating in the co-op just by talking about it and the value that it provides uh, members and community is actually um, you know, super valuable to, to the organization. So um, uh, the serve your co-op, all kinds of frequency is possible there from uh, every day to every hour using super high frequency, lots of choices being made every day, owner level, very important, relatively low frequency. So I think the opportunity is to kind of separate participation out into some categories and really work on, on, on all of them, not just owner participation. So our goal is to um, lay that out, start to fill in even more detail within that framework, be doing some scanning for what co-ops are doing already that's just amazing, and then be able to start feeding that back out into um, the food co-op community so that we can really be excellent in this uh, participation concept. So there you go. Thanks so much.